Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Today we're going to do some compositing. We're going to clip the person out of this scene and put them in this scene. But the trick here is we're also going to bring along their shadow. Now, before we begin, we're going to prep one of the tools we're going to be using. That tool is the Quick Mask tool. And by default, it won't be set up properly. The Quick Mask tool is over here towards the bottom of the toolbar. Just double click on it so you bring up the options. By default, it's going to say masked areas. We need it to be on selected areas. Also, for this specific task, put the opacity at 100%. That will work a little better for what we're going to be doing today. Then just click OK. Now the Quick Mask tool is still active. Just hit the Q key to turn it off and on. So we're going to have it off right now. If you don't see the Quick Mask tool in your toolbar, uh, to get it there, go up to Edit, then down to Toolbar. And then over here at the bottom, you can see there's the Quick Mask tool. Just make sure it's clicked on and it will show up in your toolbar. All right, we prepped the Quick Mask tool. We're not using it yet, but we're going to be using it in a moment. The first thing we need to do is get a selection of the person in this scene. So to do that, we're going to hit the W key and get any selection tool. There's three here, Object, Quick, Magic. It doesn't, which one, data, doesn't matter which one you get when you hit the W key, because when any of those three are active, up here you have a button, Select Subject. Now personally, I'm going to go to this dropdown and let the cloud uh, select the subject. You'll get a better result, usually. So that's what I'm going to do, and then click Select Subject. Of course, in order to use that cloud selection, you need to have an active internet connection. Now you can see I have a selection of our subject. Now we need to refine this. So we're going to go to Select and Mask. And over here under the View Mode, you could use different view modes. Most often, I use either Overlay or On Black. For this, I think On Black looks uh, pretty good. Now, there's a couple different issues here. Her hair doesn't look quite right. Uh, there's a little issue by her thumb on her left hand, um, maybe under her elbow on her right arm. So we need to fix all that. So what we're going to do is we're going to first click on Refine Hair. And that should take care of some of the problems with her hair. Now what I want to do is I want to get this second tool from the top, the Refine Edge Brush. The quick or the keyboard shortcut is the R key for that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit by hitting Command Plus on my Mac a few times. And then I'm going to take this brush and resize it with the left bracket key to make it a little smaller. The right bracket key would make it larger. And then I'm just going to paint in here on her hand where that issue is, uh, problem is. Well, that looks pretty good. We'll go over here to the other side. Um, I thought there was a problem under her right elbow, but actually that's okay. There is a problem still uh, by her hair a little bit. So I'm going to get a larger brush by hitting the right bracket key. And then I'm going to paint around here by her hair. Let that render, and that looks a little better. And we'll come in here and see if that make that a little better. And that isn't too bad. So let's fit this to screen by hitting Commander Control Zero. So it's fit to screen. So so far it looks pretty good. Maybe her shoe looks a little funky down here. Don't have to be too fussy with this because um, in the final version, when she's in the other scene, she's going to be a little smaller. So you'll mo notice these fine details. I did kind of screw up her shoe there, so I'm going to undo it by hitting Command Z on my Mac. Um, if I zoom in a little bit, I could see what the issue is there. Yeah, her shoe just looks funny. Now I could go to this third tool from the top. This is just a normal brush tool, and we'll paint in mode, and we'll come in here and make sure we're getting all of her shoe. And this is like this isn't like a smart brush. It's just painting in wherever I paint. Let's go with that. That looks pretty decent. We'll hit Command Zero again to fit it to screen. All right, we have a selection. Now to kind of refine it a little better, and this sometimes helps with the hair, go to this um, little check box, Decontaminate Colors. Turn that on. But go, we don't want to output it to a new layer with Layer Mask. We prefer to output it to a new layer all by itself. So I think we're done. We'll click OK. Now you see we have two layers, and we have our clipped out model right there. And then below that, that background layer, if I turn that back on, you can see that's the entire uh, the entire image as it was. 
Now we're going to turn off that top layer, the clipped out layer, and we're going to go back to this background layer. Now we're going to concentrate on getting that shadow. Now to do this, what we're going to do is make sure that background layer is active or on it. The top layer is turned off. We're going to go to channels. What we're going to do is we're going to hold the command or control key in command if you have a Mac, control if you have a PC, and click on RGB. When you do that, you'll notice you'll get a selection. This is a selection of the highlights and some of the midtones. It's not selecting the shadows. Now, of course, the shadow is considered a shadow, and we don't want to select the highlights and midtones. We want to select the shadows. Now, to better see what we're doing here, we're going to turn on the quick mask mode. We're going to hit the Q key to do that. You can see that it's mostly red. That means most everything is selected. What we want to do is invert this. Hit Commander Control I. Now you'll see that most of the background isn't selected anymore, but our model is and some of the shadow is. We need to improve this. So we're going to bring up levels. Hit Commander Control L to bring up levels. And to improve this, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to go to this right one and maybe move this in a little bit. You can see how it's taking it away from the background. Maybe move this one over a little bit. It's putting it more on the darker areas of the image. Maybe move this tiny bit to the right. You just kind of play it or play around with it till you get. So most of the red is either on the model herself and on that shadow and we don't want it on the actual background that we clipped out already so we're going to click OK now we're going to go back to our layers panel we're still on that background layer we're going to turn off quick mask mode by hitting the Q key now we have this crazy looking selection we're going to put that on its own layer by hitting commander control J on our computer now if I turn off that background layer you can see we have a shadow here, and we also have the model, but she's kind of transparent. Well, all we need to do is turn on that top layer, and there she is. And basically have the model now with her shadow, and everything else is clipped out. Now what we need to do is move the model and her shadow over to that other scene. But before we do that, because we have two layers, the top layer is the actual model, and the middle layer here is actually partly the model plus the shadow. What I want to do to make this easier to move is to combine these into one layer. To do that, hit Commander Control E while you're clipped or clicked on the top layer. So you're on the top layer, top layer is active, hit Commander Control E, and that will just make those two layers one layer. We still have that background layer off. We don't need it anymore. We're going to get the Move tool, hit the V key. And then we'll click on our model, drag her up to the tab that contains the other scene, and drop her in. Now she's way too big. So we're going to hit Command minus a few times to make the whole screen smaller. Hit Command T to go into free transform mode. And then we'll resize her so she fits the scene better. Now I'm going to hit Command zero to fit it to screen. Fit to screen a little bit. All right. So she's still a little too big. Now you're looking at it probably and you're thinking, okay, I see the shadow, but the shadow's going the wrong direction. Because in the scene, it looks like the light source is over the photographer's right shoulder, whereas the shadow on our model is being cast to the right. We need it the other way around. So while we're still in free transform mode, just right click inside of that box and then go down to flip horizontal. I'm going to flip her around. Then we can move her over here. Great right about there. Maybe, maybe she's still a little too big. What do you think? Like that, maybe. And then click the check box at the top. Committing to the crop. And there we are. Command zero to fit it to screen. And now you can see we brought the model over. Put her in the scene. We brought her shadow with her. So it looks natural, and she actually looks like she belongs in that scene. She's showing off her new remodeled home, maybe. And um, that's how you do it. That's how you could bring a shadow with an object or a person uh, and composite it with that object or person into another scene. 
thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.